If the F-22 rules the skies, the Su-57 lurks as a deadly predator in the shadows. For decades, Russian fighter jets have been symbols of raw power and extreme agility. Planes like the MiG-29, Su-27, and Su-35 prove themselves as lethal opponents in aerial combat. But everything changed the moment the F-22 Raptor entered the battlefield. For the first time in history, Russia faced a fighter it simply couldn't match. A stealth aircraft that vanished from radar, struck targets before anyone even knew it was there, and roamed freely over enemy airspace. Military drills didn't lie. In combat simulations, a single F-22 could take on five fourth-generation Russian jets at once and shoot them all down without giving them a chance to respond. It was an invisible predator, an unstoppable aerial assassin. When the F-22 Raptor entered service in 2005, it ushered in a new era of air warfare. This jet wasn't just lethal in dogfights. It could strike targets before anyone even knew it was there. With extreme stealth, Mach 2 supercruise, and cutting-edge weaponry, the Raptor rendered all fourth-generation fighters obsolete in just a few years. For Russia, this was a direct blow to its air defense strategy. The arms race was no longer just about superiority, it became a fight for survival in the skies. During the Cold War, Soviet and American fighters were evenly matched. The MiG-29 could take on an F-16. The Su-27 could challenge an F-15. But with the arrival of the F-22, Russia had nothing capable of countering it. The flankers, no matter how agile, were far too visible on radar. But the Raptor wasn't the only problem. With the F-35 Lightning II, the United States now had a stealthy, multi-role fighter packed with advanced sensors, real-time data networks, and capabilities Russia hadn't even imagined. While Russia still relied on its upgraded Su-27 seconds and Mi-G-29 seconds, the U.S. already had two fifth-generation jets in full-scale production, and that spelled only one thing. In a real combat scenario, Russian pilots would be taken out before they even knew what hit them. Russia saw the gap widening and understood it had to respond. This is how the need for a new fighter was born. It wasn't a luxury or a whim, it was a matter of life and death for the Russian Air Force. If they couldn't match the power of the F-22 and F-35, they would be sidelined in the skies forever. The Kremlin gave the order, develop a stealth jet capable of outmaneuvering any Raptor, armed with missiles that could strike beyond visual range and equipped with electronic warfare systems that could turn any F-35 into an easy target. Thus came the PACFA project. Thus was born Russia's ghost fighter, the Su-57 Felon. But the question remained, could Russia get it ready in time? This jet wasn't designed to be just another fighter. It was meant to challenge total dominance of the skies. And it wasn't easy. Unlike the United States, which could produce hundreds of Raptors with its multi-billion dollar defense budget, Russia had to build its stealth fighter with severely limited resources. The economic crisis following the collapse of the Soviet Union had devastated Russia's military industry. Producing advanced fighters became a battle against financial collapse. Amid all this, the Kremlin placed its bet on Sukhoi, the only company with enough experience to challenge the F-22 Yet the PACFA project faced constant delays. By 2010, while the United States already had over 180 F-22 seconds in operation, Russia had barely managed to get its first prototype airborne. Every step forward seemed to bring a new economic setback, international sanctions, or technical problem that forced them to rethink production entirely. In 2014, Russia annexed Crimea, and the West responded with devastating sanctions. Access to critical technology was blocked, pushing the fighter project to the brink of cancellation. 
Russian engineers retooled production using local materials and components. They adopted innovative radar systems and focused on extreme maneuverability in close combat, a level of agility no other stealth fighter in the world possessed. After years of relentless development, the Su-57 finally entered service in 2020. It became Russia's first fifth-generation fighter, a jet with a menacing silhouette, capable of outperforming any other fighter in agility, and equipped with stealth technology tailored to Russian needs. The Su-57 proved to be a formidable aircraft, but the greatest question remained unanswered. Could it truly take down an F-22 inches a dogfight? What would happen if they met in the skies? Who would come out alive? Unlike the F-22, which relies primarily on stealth, the Su-57 is a war machine built to be deadly in any scenario. It achieves this with three key elements that make it a lethal rival unmatched maneuverability, long-range lethal weaponry, and advanced electronic warfare systems. Maneuverability The Su-57 dances effortlessly through the sky. Its engines, equipped with three-dimensional thrust vectoring, allow it to perform maneuvers no Western fighter can replicate. In a dogfight, an F-22 could face something it has never encountered before, a stealth fighter that is not only fast but can twist, break, and change direction with a level of agility that defies physics. While the F-22 loses energy during sharp turns, the Su-57 maintains complete control, executing impossible maneuvers at low speeds and in close quarters. That difference can mean the line between life and death. In close combat, the Su-57 could position itself behind a Raptor and take it down with a precise shot from its GSH-31 cannon. But the real terror of the Su-57 isn't just its agility, it's its weapons. Like the F-22, most of its armament is housed in internal compartments. This reduces its radar signature and allows it to strike without revealing its position. With six internal hardpoints, it can carry a mix of air-to-air -air and air-to-ground missiles. On its six external hardpoints, it can mount missiles and bombs for missions where extreme stealth isn't required. While Western fighters rely on stealth to avoid detection, the Su-57 takes a different approach. See first, strike first, and eliminate the enemy before they even have a chance to react. In real combat, speed and maneuverability matter less than one crucial factor who spots the other first. This is where the Su-57 may hold a decisive advantage. Let's take a closer look at its deadly arsenal. Starting with the R-37M missile, the ultimate Raptor Hunter. Imagine a missile capable of reaching and destroying a target over 186 miles away. Once launched, there is virtually no escape. That is the R-37M, the most lethal air-to-air -air missile in the Russian arsenal. This missile travels at over Mach 6, with a range exceeding 186 miles enough to take out an F-22 or an AWACS aircraft undetected. Its advanced guidance systems keep the target locked, even if it tries to evade. For NATO's early warning planes, like the E-3 Sentry or E-7 Wedgetail, the R-37M is a nightmare come to life. If the Su-57 manages to launch an R-37M before being detected, the enemy has virtually no chance to react. However, despite its incredible range, the R-37M relies on the Su-57 detecting its target first. But this isn't its only deadly missile. The R-77M, Russia's answer to the AIM-120 AMRAAM, has an estimated range of 124 miles and can engage multiple targets simultaneously. Its active radar makes it a versatile weapon for beyond visual range combat. For close quarters engagements, maneuverability is everything. And that's where the K-74M2 comes in. This short-range air-to-air missile is designed for extreme turns and attacks from any angle within roughly 18.5 miles, guided by infrared. It can lock onto a target without relying on radar, making it perfect for taking down enemy fighters in deadly dogfights. If the Su-57 closes in, the K-74M2 turns the battle into a death sentence for its adversary. 
But the Su-57 isn't just built to fight enemy fighters. It's also a precision strike platform against ground targets. The KH-38 is built for precision strikes. This short-range guided missile can destroy enemy fortifications, radar installations, and armored vehicles. With a range of 25 miles and multiple guidance options, laser, satellite, or radar, it turns the Su-57 into a true multi-role fighter capable of striking in any scenario. Then there's the KH-47M-2 Kinzhal, NATO's nightmare. If there's one weapon in the Su-57 arsenal that makes the West tremble, it's this hypersonic missile. Not only is it insanely fast, but it's nearly impossible to intercept. With speeds exceeding Mach 10, a range of over 1,250 miles, and the ability to carry nuclear or conventional warheads, it can destroy entire bases or even cities in mere minutes. The Kinzhal isn't just a missile, it's a first strike strategic weapon. A single Su-57 could launch it from Russian airspace and reach NATO targets before air defenses even have a chance to react. Systems like Aegis, Patriot, or S-400 were designed to intercept ballistic missiles. But hypersonic weapons like the Kinzhal are a completely different challenge. Its incredible speed and maneuverability make it virtually unstoppable. This means that even one Su-57 could potentially sink a U.S. aircraft carrier before the fleet has time to respond. And beyond long-range missiles, warfare often demands surgical strikes, precision hits, where a single impact can turn the tide of battle. To accomplish this, the Su-57 is armed with guided bombs, including the KAB-500 and KAB-1500. Built to destroy heavily fortified targets, the KAB-500 delivers 1,100 pounds of destructive power guided by laser or satellite. The KAB-1500 packs 3,300 pounds of sheer destructive force capable of piercing bunkers and reinforced structures. Whether it's an enemy command post, air defense site, or missile installation, these bombs carry out surgical strikes with extreme precision. When precision isn't an option, the Su-57 can deploy unguided or semi-guided bombs like the FAB-250, FAB-500, FAB-1500, and even FAB-3000 designed to saturate enemy zones with a hailstorm of explosives and shrapnel. Originally, these FAB bombs were simple, dumb weapons lacking advanced guidance. But modern technology has revived and transformed these relics of war. In the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, Russia has not only resurrected them, but also revolutionized their design, particularly the FAB-500, 1000, 500, and 3000 models. The introduction of Unified Modular Planning and Correction UMPK, systems has turned what were once dumb bombs into sophisticated precision weapons, now equipped with GLONASS navigation and deployable fins. These upgrades have launched the Su-57 into the modern era, capable of turning an entire battlefield into a smoking crater within seconds. Finally, what makes the Su-57 a truly complete threat is its electronic warfare and stealth capabilities. It can render an enemy fighter virtually defenseless before it even knows what hit it. Its advanced electronic warfare systems can jam enemy radars, confuse missile guidance, and render Western aircraft incapable of attacking mid-flight. Imagine an F-35 inches combat, trying to lock onto a target, but something's wrong. Its radar stops responding, and it can't see anything. Systems display interference. Missiles fail. At that very moment, the Su-57 is already behind, ready for the final strike. Meanwhile, while the F-22 and F-35 are coated with advanced radar-absorbing materials, the Su-57 takes a different approach. Its fuselage uses angled surfaces and structural design to reduce radar signature, though its stealth isn't as extreme as its American counterparts. Some reports suggest the Su-57 has a larger radar cross-section than the F-22, meaning it could be detected earlier in combat. However, its true edge comes from its ability to neutralize detection with electronic warfare. Though it remains a calculated risk in environments flooded with advanced radar systems, this is where the debate begins. 
SU-57 designers claim its stealth technology is sufficient for the combat scenarios Russia faces. But in reality, its invisibility doesn't match the total stealth of the F-22 or F-35. Still, the SU-57 doesn't need to be completely undetectable. It just needs to see first and strike before its enemy can react. With its advanced radar and infrared sensors, it could track a Raptor without being noticed and launch an R-37M missile from over 186 miles away. The Su-57 doesn't have to be a ghost, it only needs to be hard enough to track to close in and hunt its target before the opponent can respond. Here's the reality check. The Su-57 is a deadly aircraft, but Russia has very few in active service. Meanwhile, the United States has produced 195 farads, 22 seconds and over 900 farads, 35 seconds. Russia barely has a few dozen Su-57 seconds operational. In war, capability matters, but so does sheer numbers. No matter how skilled the Su-57 is, facing waves of Raptors and F-35 seconds with more support, more missiles, and extensive radar coverage is a daunting challenge. On paper, the Su-57 and F-22 are designed to clash head-on. But in reality, the F-22 enjoys a crushing strategic advantage. While the U.S. dominates the skies with a massive stealth fleet, Russia struggles to produce enough Su-57 seconds to make a real impact. Still, air combat is never predictable. One maneuver, one missile, one clever tactic can change the outcome of a fight. Perhaps these Su-57 seconds don't need numbers. They just need the perfect opportunity to prove they can take down a raptor. And now, you have the perfect chance to like this video and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.